hi and welcome to my new haunted series um, for this series I was driving from LA to Wisconsin and filming in a bunch of different locations um, each of them supposedly being haunted um, for the series I want to share with you video from each of my haunted locations a couple of them wouldn't allow video so we are doing pictures for those and from each place I did a makeup afterwards that was inspired by what I experienced there, things that I saw there, and just whatever inspired me about that particular day. We are back on the road and on our way back to Wisconsin we decided we were going to stop and see some cool things. So today we're stopping at the Winchester Mansion which has kind of been a fascination of mine since I was a little girl. I'm really excited to check it out. It was built by Sarah Winchester in between the years 1884 and 1922 and spreads over six acres of land. The house as a whole is really awesome and I can't wait to explore it. I wish we see something spooky cool. I was just informed that we can't film inside of the mansion. So I'm going to be taking pictures and talking to you guys through it at a later date, which is fine because I wanted to do voiceovers for you all about the history of the mansion and a little extra info. So here we start our picture tour. Hi and welcome. I am here with my friend Jessie. She is going to be my model today. And for this paint, I've decided to paint um, Sarah Winchester's favorite um, stained glass piece. We went out drinking last night and won a lot of rubber ducks, so I am not speaking good English today. <laughs> There's also a wild chat in the background. <laughs> he's doing something boring looking, so we're just going to pretend he's not there, and if he pops in to visit, it's great. <laughs> so the middle of my window is um, cream, so I'm going to start with the cream and then I'm going to go down into, I actually have a bronze um, and gold rather than like a yellow, and then I'm going to go up into the blues. So with our center being like right around her neck area. So I'm just doing this as a chest up piece all day. So since I'm not speaking well and we don't need to watch me while I'm painting, I decided to put in some photos here of some of the other beautiful stained glass pieces that were in this mansion. There was more than I could ever possibly fit in this video, um, including ones that look like spider webs, beautiful pink ones, all these awesome different things. There was also some really interesting features in the house, such as these very, very short stairs for Sarah to walk up. Um, she was very short in stature and she suffered from arthritis. So a lot of the doors were very short and the stairs were very short. And then there were secondary sets of stairs for the um, servants or guests to use. Though Sarah herself really didn't have any guests. Here I'm starting with our um, blue base on Jessie's face as well. So I'm going to kind of flip back and forth between the narrative of the Winchester Mansion and talking about that and talking about the paint as I work on it. So one of the most interesting things in Sarah's home was probably the room that they called the seance room. It did have a special little secret hidden door that could only go one way and not the other. Um, 
this room was kind of in the heart of the house. A lot of the other things in the home that they like to highlight and talk about is Sarah's constant use of the number 13. Including in this window pane, there are exactly 13 orbs in the window. And a lot of the patterns of her windows, she has 13 flowers, 13 this, 13 that. I believe there's exactly 13 chandeliers in the home as well. So a lot of repeating numbers in 13. Switching to Jessie's paint, I used a metallic base and I'm bringing in a lighter blue paint on her forehead and down into her cheekbones to kind of give us that gradient we need to match the window that you saw at the start of this. My personal favorite areas of the house during the tour was Sarah's amazing greenhouse. She had a greenhouse built right in with a small pulley elevator to actually bring plants up and down. It was pretty well known that Sarah didn't have a whole lot of guests, but she seemed to really like plants. And I can relate to liking plants and pets more than I like people. One of the other things I loved was looking at pictures of the house before the earthquake. At some point in time during Sarah's construction, there was an earthquake that took out a huge chunk of her home. This ended in her actually blocking off parts of the home that she never used or built on again. Some people say it's because she thought that the spirits were mad at her and she needed to stop building in those areas. I think she just probably got bored and decided to move on. For Jessie's makeup now, I'm using a old powder brush that I'm distressing by slamming it on a hard surface and then using it lightly wet in the paint to kind of add a little bit of texture. I want to add some of that glass texture and speckling that we see in the stained glass window. I feel like I may be doing this a little out of order, but the rumor around why the Winchester Mansion is so haunted is that Sarah, after the death of her husband and the death of a child, went to a psychic and the psychic told her that it was the spirits of all of the guns that had killed people that her husband had made, the Winchester Rifles, that those spirits would haunt her unless she built a beautiful home for them to reside in. So she started building this home and just never stopped building. And that part is true. She never stopped building on this home in her lifetime. Based on the tour that I took, to me, it felt like she just really liked beautiful things. She would start a project, stop it, start over in another area, change her mind, redo it, and she also did not like to share. Just a little bit about Jessie while we're working on her. I am doing Jessie's line work now, all the little black lines that break up the different pieces of the stained glass. So talking about Sarah and not sharing, she would buy whole bolts of fabric, three times the amount of wallpaper that she needed just so she would be the only one that had it. Um, this makes restoration for the building really easy if anything goes wrong with the wallpaper. They have enough wallpaper to re-paper the entire building three times over, which means this masterpiece will stay intact, hopefully, for years and years to come. You get it. I'm mapping the lines. I'm going to turn off the camera, finish mapping the lines. And we shall move on. Mm. Ta-da! <laughs> totally. Yeah. Okay. Now we've got to color our balls. <laughs> I need a secondary camera just for Chad reacts. I know, right? <laughs> We're going to start with blue balls. <laughs> So I'm painting in all of my accents now, which you can see. Um, just using a smaller brush and being really careful to get a nice matte application. 
Um, a little bit more on the tour. There are two tour options. One is a pretty standard option and for like $10 more, you can go see all these extra places in the house, including the witch's cap, which if you stand right in the center of it and speak, you can hear this really strange echo effect where it like changes your voice that I can't quite describe. You just have to try it yourself. Um, that has been an area of the house that psychics have reported the most activity. So I think it's worth checking out for the extra $10. The tickets themselves are quite pricey, but it takes a lot of work to upkeep the grounds. So I feel like it was worth it for me to see the whole house and the extra $10 was worth the extended tour for me as well. And that's just my personal opinion. Of course, everybody is entitled to their own opinions. So I've busted into my luster kits. I'm gonna start with some of the creams to um, highlight, and then I'll be going in with the luster powders to accent everything and make everything super pretty and beautiful. And the shine that it needs. I'm going to start with this yellow. So I'm using the luster kit with the creams and the powders. I'm going in first with the yellow cream and accenting all the little circles that are in this piece. I also ended up using this to accent the edges of the windows and create a little bit more depth, which I think you will see later in this tutorial. Yep, there it is. I'm going in with that yellow cream and just doing all of my edges. The creams and the powders work really well together, and the powders do, I feel like, blend a little bit easier, but the creams are more opaque, so I'm using both in different areas to just really create depth. Again, I want this to have some texture and some flecking like it's stained glass. I want it to have that sense of layer and light to create that glass effect. Um, so I'm using a lot of different products all layered up together. Here you can see I'm shading around the black lines and I'm using just a little bit of um, luster powder for that as well. Going into the luster creams, I'm using the black and lining both of her eyes and her lips with this so that her face can stand out from the window itself. I did not make this piece with the intention of blending her completely into it, um, but more she is the piece. So I'm trying to bring her eyes and her lips back out of the window itself. Now to make the eyes really shiny and give them a lot of dimension, I'm going in with one of the teal colored luster powders and tapping that powder on top of the black cream that I put down on her eyes. I'm also going in with this powder and I'm going to highlight in some of the panes of the window as well. I'm also touching on the tip of her nose, her cupid's bow, the very center of her lips, just trying to bring out and highlight and add shine to all of the areas that I want to accent, as well as pulling some of the colors out of the areas that I want to make them look more dimensional, even if they're painted flat on her skin. Here I'm sealing underneath her eyes with a little bit of powder 
I am just using one of the blue luster powders, one of the ones that has a little less shine to it, but um, still a really good color. Um, all of the luster powders do have some shine, I just find that some are a little bit shinier than others. Here I'm going in with that powder and accenting each individual pane of the window. Once I am happy with where everything is, I am ready to call my piece finished and get some awesome footage. Don't forget, if you want to see more of my Haunted series, to like this video, subscribe, hit the bell, and if you want to see different places, comment down below.